different seeds or different crops take different number of days for them to germinate. Uh, they take from three days up to ten days. Some even can take even fourteen days. Some may take longer because of their dormancy, seed dormancy, especially the the capsicum or the the pepper uh, varieties or the pepper family can take longer because of the varieties. As you can see, uh, it's seven days, and our majority of our seeds have germinated. Among them is the collard, the cabbages, they have all germinated. Um, and we are waiting for others to germinate. We used two methods to propagate our seeds. One, we, we made line, we made drill and uh, poured our seeds. Uh, the other one, we did the broadcasting of our seeds and they have all germinated. We have uh, both F1 and um, indigenous seeds that we are doing here. Indigenous seeds for vegetables, the F1 also seeds for vegetables like a collard or a cabbage and dania. And the germination is perfect. Now, after germination, this where also many farmers uh, usually face big challenges. You've all learned how to make the beds. You've all learned how to sow the seeds. If this is your first video that you're watching, or this is the first training that you're watching, go back and see how we did all these processes. Now, after doing everything, uh, sowing the seed, making the beds and sowing the seed the right way, it is now another challenge, or we take another challenge of managing the seed or managing the seedlings. And don't forget, these seedlings are very young, they are very tender, and they are very susceptible to everything, to environmental condition, they are susceptible to diseases, they are susceptible to pests. So how do you go, uh, or how do you handle these? Because one, you need to keep them healthy. And you can not only keep them healthy, if you protect them against uh, environmental problems against diseases, against pests, and also making that their nutrition is checked. We done, we did our first check on the nutrition, which was uh, preparing the soil and making sure that um, the soil pH was good, the, the, the organic matter in the soil was okay, and as we speak, We've gotten our seed, seedlings which have germinated over 90% and now it is high time to maintain it. And these are the things that you look at. One, if you are doing it under a greenhouse, you check on the temperature. Sometimes uh, in a case of us who are doing it in open field, we may not be able to control the temperatures, the hot temperatures, especially when it is, it's cold like in the environment that I'm in, the, 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 the weather that we are in is a cold weather. But these seedlings need now to be uh, taken care of against cold. And how do we do this? Because once it's very cold, uh, that's a one number one enemy because it brings in the fungal diseases. Now, when it comes to, to managing the temperatures, we usually play or we usually uh, work around our irrigation. Uh, how often do we water? We need to make sure the seedlings or the nursery bed is moist, not waterlogged, not soggy. It's supposed to be always moist. With enough moisture content, that means that seedlings uh, picks up very well without or with less fungal disease infection. And if you realize that the moisture content because of the atmospheric uh, humidity is very high, now you come in with a, a preventive fungicide to prevent the seedlings against uh, diseases. Among them, the preventive fungicide, you can use copper-based fungicide, any, any copper-based, blue copper, green copper, it's good for the seedlings. You can also use a product with mancozeb and metalaxyl, best for this stage and for the seedlings. It's one of the best products that you can handle when it comes to that. So. The next problem is personal diseases. At this stage now, you run 
with your pest control. You run with the um, product to control pest because pest is the biggest enemy. The, the, the seedling is very juicy, the seedling is very tender, and all the pest now may come eating your seedlings. So what you need to do is to make sure that you protect them against pests. From that, you touch on nutrition. Even if we, touch, we, we did our first uh, application of manure, we did our past control pH, we also need a nutrient uh, for the seedlings. And among the nutrients that we usually look for is any product that is rich in phosphorus because these, product, these seedlings now needs to grow strong, needs to grow healthy, and now we need to raise a healthy seedling uh, that we are going to transplant in few weeks. So that is how you, you look at your seedlings and that's how you manage your siblings. And from this, you are going to transplant very healthy siblings or you are going to sell very healthy siblings. Like I told you, you can approach it as an advantage of growing them in your field or you can approach it as a business venture, sell the seedlings to other farmers. So we are here uh, to learn all the tactics to be an entrepreneur uh, in selling seedlings and also to be a, a good farmer by raising your own seedlings. Hope you've learned something from what to this training. If this is your first time that you're watching me, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that we can continue learning together. Bye.